Don't fuck up. Don't fuck yourself. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Rude Cooking School podcast. I'm your host, John Hauser the third. The third, I have to say legally, or I'm a dead guy, or my son, or another dead guy. Anyway, with me is a guy who really needs to go play video games and or put up cat trees. <laughs> Hark, tis I, Evan the Mayor. Hey, man, what's up? You know, enjoying that fiancé out of town life. So you're just in your underwear right now besides having a shirt no. on? No, I got jeans. It's fine. You sure? Okay, good. Yeah. You, just, you just put on a shirt finally for me? Yeah. <laughs> Wearing the same shirt for the meeting I had, the Zoom meeting I had at 10 a.m., well, isn't that how it works, though? You wear a shirt all day? Uh, you change shirts throughout the day? I probably would have changed into something a little, like, I don't know, looser, more housebound. Oh, know? I got you. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Like, like a house coat, like a like an old... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoking jacket. <laughs> nice! <laughs> I have a couple of those. They're really comfortable. Oh. I have a I have a red one that's really nice. Smoking robe. Yeah, it's made out of velvet. Wow. Crushed velvet. Yeah, it's velvet. I I bought it and it was a really it had gigantor 70s lapels. And I took it and because there was a there was a nice uh velvet tuxedo jacket that I wanted that was like five thousand dollars. Wow. And I was like, well, I can just buy one that has really big lapels and have them alter it. And they altered it for me for like 30 bucks and then I had the jacket. Speaking of five thousand dollars, I was shopping online today for a liquor cabinet Mm. and you can find like these dumb you know sort of metal ones with the mesh doors with led lights all over them for i don't know 200 bucks right but if you if you want to get an actual wooden liquor cabinet they're like four thousand dollars like a really well-made liquor cabinet yeah yeah, yes (laughs) i could probably just go to my aunt's house and like you like steal hers Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah, you don't need this anymore. Give it to me. Yeah. I mean, anything that's well built is going to cost you an arm and a leg. I've been looking at uh, like club chair, you know, like a like a comfy leather chair. Oh, sure. But but not like a lazy boy, like a really nicely built big ass. Just you just sit in that motherfucker and you just sit back. Right. Like it's a club chair. They're they're just big. Mm hmm. They're, yeah, they're like three thousand oh, dollars. Crazy. God, I'm never gonna get one of these. Things. And then if you have cats, like they just shred the shit out of it. That that was the like I remember when we brought our couch home for the first time right before uh, Crosby was born, and or no, it was like a year or two before Crosby was born, and the cats just instantly were like, "Fuck yeah!" yeah. And I was like, <laughs> "I'll murder you, motherfuckers! I don't care." And ulti- I ultimately did murder two of them. So, wow. Yeah. Should you be admitting that on your podcast? The other one, the other, t- the other one I, I outlived. So. <laughs> no, we had, we had to have them put to sleep. They were old and aggressive. That and, doesn't count as murder, John. Well, it felt like it at the time. I didn't kill them. Well, you yeah. don't have to kill them with your bare hands. What? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I've heard. I, it put them to sleep. Yeah, with... With your bare hands. Oh, yes. Well, that's how I did it. No. It's free. No, it was awful. We had to, take them, to the, 50 we had to take them to the vet. They were old and <laughs> fucking terrible and you know, the worst. Anyway. Um, R.I.P. Sifo and Ollie. Oh. Uh, yeah. Remember that show? Um, I do. And Sinatra, who was the third cat. We had three cats at the time. Oh. It was a, it was a whole mess of cats. Um. How have you been doing cooking? Okay, so uh, you know we're getting married in the spring, and yes, we both need to lose some weights. And I have uh, re restarted wearing my my Fitbit. Okay, and doing you know I've broken it up. I'm doing like twenty minutes at a time, walking a couple you know laps around the park. Sure, uh, which I haven't done in quite some time, and my legs actually are sore, which is a good signal. Yeah, it is. Um, that I was completely out of fucking shape, which we all knew. Um, so I'm working my way up to then walking all the, my my happy ass all the way down to the the gym downtown, and uh, getting on some machines and doing lightweights, and then you know doing the elliptical and then walking home. Right. Um, but 
the other thing that we're doing is uh, Hannah heard through a friend of hers about this, um, uh, you know, app that you pay some lady influencer lady like some money per month. You get a meal plan, you get coaching, you get uh, community support through the app. You get to do all your nutrition calculation, this, that, and the other. And you get this big old PDF. We signed up like two or three weeks ago. Okay. So we get this PDF that has the meal plan, has all these little recipes in it. And I'm thumbing through them and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Breakfast. Scrambled eggs on toast. <laughs> I'm like, that is not a recipe. No. That's just like, uh, yeah, put some scrambled eggs on those toasts there. Yeah, it's um, almost like an influencer doesn't know stuff. Uh, some of the, yeah, I mean, some of it, some of the recipes I was actually pleased with, uh, except that they had weird substitutions. And one of them was a beef stroganoff. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, huh, beef stroganoff. All right, I, I'll make that. But the instead of noodles, it it wanted rice. And um, uh, okay. that's okay, I guess. I can, do, yeah. I can deal with that. I'm fine with that. But also, it used soy sauce instead of work. Um, yeah, that's not the same. But I've seen that as well. But that's it, that's a completely the opposite. It's, it's not very the same tomato thing. heavy too. It tasted fine. It was fine. It tasted sure. Fine. But um, just a lot of weird little tweaks to these recipes that I was like, well, that's not how you make that, right? And um, you know, for in in, in this particular recipe, it was like, all right, take the bell pepper, chop it up. Take the onion, chop it up. Take your cubes of uh, chuck roast, throw them in the pan, and throw a splash of water, and then saute them for a couple of minutes until the the, the beef is browned. And I'm like, you don't saute things in water. No, that's not how that works. <laughs> things <laughs> don't all. brown in water. They just become gray. <laughs> yeah, very gray. <laughs> little things, you know, little things like that. And Yeah. We did make a, a bolognese, which, you know, it used like 93% lean ground beef. Which is, eh, it's expensive and it's kind of meh. Yeah. But it worked. Yeah. That 93% lean is good for braises. Like sure. things that cook for a long time or super duper hot quick. Like before it even gets a oh, chance. Oh, it cooks to really, instantly. I mean, there's yeah. no fat in it. Right. Um, yeah. It's just that with the way the the way that the recipes are structured the end product unless you kind of you know for instance it call, one of the recipes called for fat free cheese and I'm like no 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 we're not, we're not <laughs> doing like, that that's no. an impossibility recipe we'll, we'll use regular cheese maybe just a little less yeah i mean you know everything in moderation yeah, yeah. i mean it's been fun you know just kind of make an and uh, the little, you know, the little egg bites when you put it, you, you just mix up some eggs and then chop up some broccoli and take sure. some ham and some cheddar cheese, throw it all into a bowl and then pour them into little cupcakes and bake them up. Perfect. Perfect little breakfast treat. Yeah. Those little guys are great. Yep. We I, don't made, eat, I, I don't eat breakfast. Uh, you're just a what? Black coffee in the morning? No, I, I, I don't. I just drink water. For the first hour, I'm awake. The breakfast of champions. And then once I get to work, I start funneling tea into myself. And then usually okay. at around 11 o'clock, I'll have a snack. Right. So that's when I start putting food in my body. And it's what's your little probably, What's your little snack? Granola and an apple. Ugh. No. I like to do a hard-boiled egg with some nuts and then a little, some, maybe some cranberries. What are you talking? That's gross. What? Cranberries and eggs? What the almonds? fuck is wrong with you? Well, you don't eat them like uh, at the same time. Why are in you your blending them, and them go, together and drinking them? It's so weird. Sufficient. <laughs> <laughs> <It's efficient. laughs> um, no, I, you know, like, uh, have you ever had, uh, what's, what, oh, damn, I'll net, why can't I remember her name now? The granola lady in Baltimore. Oh, shit. Uh, she makes the greatest. Miss gr Vicky's? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. But there's like more than one granola company in Baltimore, which is annoying. Michelle's Granola. Yeah. They yeah. make. Used to be. They make the. Used to be at the farmer's market. And now I think they're up in Timonium at an incubator. I think. Yeah. Unless they've. They have an incubator, operated. but they, they, I think they still have a stall there, but they have the greatest granola I've ever had in my life. Like it's mm. the crunchiest. 
I don't know what okay. they do to it to keep it so goddamn crunchy. They spray it with plastic. Probably. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a bunch of lacquer. <laughs> but I get, you know, just I get the maple and raisin and it's really good. Uh, Leanna likes the pistachio and lemon, which is actually really good, okay. too. Uh, but then, you know, you know, like a like a half a cup of that and then like a small apple, like like a good apple just chopped up into chunks. If I'm feeling if I'm feeling squirrely, I had a little peanut mm-hmm. butter. Yeah, wow. little peanut butter, apple, granola. It's fucking awesome. You're a fucking man of adventure over Snack here. Snack of champions, baby. So that's your 11sies. Yeah. And then I don't eat again until like four because I go to the gym for lunch. And then at four, I'll eat my lunch lunch, which can be just whatever the fuck I want. So you eat your lunch at four? Yep. I'm, and then I'm you healthy. eat dinner at what eleven? Like some sort of Spaniard? I, we normally eat dinner around nine. Wow, you are a Spaniard. Yeah, we're very we're very European. Mm-hmm. I don't get home until you know between six and seven, depending on if I have to you know buy dinner. I mean buy stuff. And I normally go to the like I'm an anomaly. I go to the store, like I'll go to Safeway or you know Harris Teeter or whatever. Four nights a week. Four four nights um, four yeah. nights a weekday, not weekends. I'll go on the weekends too, because weekends is when I when I do big cooking things. Um, I actually like doing that because I don't overload. Like, I won't wind up with a, ref- a, f- a fridge full of bullshit. I have just a, rots away. My problem is I have a fridge full of bullshit anyway to start with, <laughs> and and a second fridge that's you know full of experiments. So it's like mm. you know. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to overload it with stuff for tomorrow or the next day Then I can just buy the day of and just be like, you know, it just, it's just an extra 20 minutes out of my way. You know, it's, I, I don't mind it. Speaking of the garbage, uh, supermarket that's closest to me, the giant food, uh, they have, I, I only had to go over there to get beef bouillon cubes and there were two options, giant brand artificially flavored beef bouillon cubes. And better than bouillon brand bouillon. Okay. Which is the paste. Yeah. And that paste is some good fucking paste. I was about to say, it that's the that's good. what I use. It's the greatest invention it's ever. Good. It's really is it the good. first time you used it? Uh first time in a long time. It, it's but, uh, it's really good. I would I would drop some of that in hot water and stir it up and drink it. No, of course. I've done that. It's good. Yeah, no, I that I, s- good I swear by that stuff. Yeah, for the last yeah. Christ. Once I found that stuff, because that's the kind of stuff that restaurants use, like bouillon paste. Mm-hmm. You know, they call it, they, you can call it demi gloss or whatever, but like, uh, you just cook down stock, and it's not really stock because it wouldn't have that texture. It's it's just you know cooked down. Uh, what would it be? Uh, it's cooked down broth with a little bit of base in it, and yeah, and that shit will last. 7,000 years in your fridge. Oh, yeah, because it's all salt. Right, all salt. I mean, I have miso paste the expiration date, and I use the term very loosely, is like from 2021. Yeah. Oh, no. I mean, yeah. Come on. Even when it dries out, you can just reconstitute it in water, and it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much salt and stuff that just keeps it. But, <laughs> okay, in my fridge right now, I got uh, better than bouillon uh, beef, roasted chicken, vegetable, Ooh. Ham because I made a uh, beef, uh, I mean bean soup this uh, this week, and then okay. lobster. I also the mush wow. the mushrooms really good. the The lobster base is amazing when you're making like, uh, like cream of crab or you know some sort of shrimp, you know some sort of any seafood based soup. It's it's just a really good seafood base. Yeah, they rock. And now they've put out like they they've branched out into different uh, like. Uh, Spanish bases and Mexican bases and um, I forget what the third is, but they just introduced three new ones. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Better stuff. than Chupacabra? Yeah, Chupacabra base. Yeah. So yeah, no, I that stuff's great. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't enjoy bouillon cubes, but if people have to use it and that's all they got, that I completely understand, you know. I don't have any problem with throwing them into like a crock of chili because it's not like 
in the grand scheme of things across the universe of that chili croc, I'm not going to notice the difference between, you know, what is just a salt block with some beef flavoring in it. The problem is all that stuff is basically the same thing. It's just dyed different. Yeah. It's just salt with a little MSG, which they call, they try to tell you it's not in there, but it is. And then just some herbs, some dried shitty herbs. Like, so, yeah. Today's episode sponsored by... Better than bouillon. <laughs> Lazy? Don't want to you, make your own stuff? I bet, if you, Buy better than I bouillon. bet if you reached out to them on social media, they'd send you some samples. I would love that. Yeah. It's a good, a good idea for your Patreon. What's funny is, uh, <laughs> for my Patreon, oh yeah, see you in, uh, see you in 2024, Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, when I would do my blog that's how long i've been using better than bouillon when i found them and i think even when i was writing for the sun i would specify i use better than bouillon for broth Mm -hmm. you know because you you would put it either way homemade homemade stock or better than bouillon because it's you know the only difference is the way the way you actually can make your urzet stock is do better than bouillon and add a little bit of gelatin in it and then let it bloom, melt it down together. There you go. It's got the body to it. And I've done that a million times. Like it's so easy and you don't have to cook bones for fucking eight hours. You know, <laughs> right, right? Like seriously, it's, it's, it's a huge, like it's a big difference in, in, in time, but the, the flavor difference is not that much. It's it's pretty incredible. Right. But but also when I mean to the uninitiated, you look at the price tag and you're like, do I want this well, that's the thing. dollar twenty nine giant brand right. or do I want this six dollar right. better than bullion? I mean the better than but, bullion will last me two weeks, maybe. Two weeks. Two weeks. It's so easy to just start spooning that shit <laughs> in the two, <laughs> two weeks. Yeah. Is, it, John is that what just does happened? I know the reference. I am making. No, I don't. What is that? It's. Uh, you ever seen the cinematic classic Total Recall? Yes. Oh, is that yeah? The part where the lady is she's checking when, into Mars when the and head she's like, starts going yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yes. Jesus. Christ. It's been a while since I've seen it. I, I haven't shown it yet. Has it? Well, you should go watch it tonight. I haven't shown it to Crosby yet because of the three tits. Oh my God. <laughs> oh yeah, the boobs. Which. I mean, all the violence he sees of you know, titties. To be titties, fair, titties I saw that movie probably when I was his age, and the three boobs really did blew my mind. Did something for you? Yeah. No, I, it's probably a good idea. Maybe I'll do that this weekend. We've been trying to find movies, and it's it's starting to be kind of kind of weird do, because because something happened in a movie, and like you know, a woman's sure to get wet or something, and Crosby look at me and be like, eh? and I'm like, oh no, oh, don't do that. <laughs> Don't make eye contact. <laughs> Maybe do the running man instead because it's still like violent and shorts. Well, but, but that's the thing is like, you know, I don't want to show him so much violent stuff, even though like that's all fun. Like the sex stuff is like it's people's bodies. All women have three titties, Crosby. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? Only the finest ones. He gets all bummed out when he finally sees boobs. He's like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> Where's the third one? <laughs> Uh, it's like it's like foreskin. They cut the third one off at birth. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Four boobs. There's a whole movement behind. Oh you yeah, know, of behind, course. There's like, a, re- a movement. Restoration of the third titty. Yeah, the restoration <laughs> of the four boob. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. That is a good joke. Um, yeah, yes. Uh, I well, are you happy with the overall thing that you're doing? Like the- I mean, we only kind of just got started okay. and I'm I'm planning on at the very least, I mean, because she's paying a lot of money sure. uh, on my end for cooking. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick to it. Um, plus, you know, it, 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 it kind of motivates you a bit because you're spending so much money to adhere to the uh, the rules and the regs. Are you doing at least one vegetarian meal a week? Uh, um, not so far. I would, but we probably will. I would recommend doing a meatless Monday. We did stuffed peppers that had mostly mushroom in it. Okay. Um, it had some ground beef, but you know, 
those stuffed peppers were very, actually really good. And that was the one that called for fat free mozzarella. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I would recommend doing a meatless Monday. Uh, we 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 do that pretty much every week unless we're like super duper tired and then just have leftovers. But we always we always try to do it. And uh, I have a stuffed pepper recipe that we did a couple weeks ago for Meatless Monday that mm. actually blew all of our minds. And we were really bummed that Leanna only made like six of them. Uh, yeah, I, if we had, if I had swapped out the lean, lean, lean ground beef with Impossible Meat, I, I wouldn't have known yeah. the difference. No, exactly. Or, you know, if you lean super heavy on the mushrooms, like it's got enough of that umami in there. Right. Uh, same goes for the stroganoff. Like if it, if we had used uh, big chunks of mushroom, right? I think it would have been just as satisfying to me, at least. She doesn't necessarily like mushrooms. One of, one of the things that's opened me to vegetarian cooking was Meatless Monday. And after a while, you get tired of trying to use fake meat. So then you just lean into like, all right, I'm just going to cook vegetables. And what I really became and still am obsessed with that I've been delving into uh the flavors and the cooking style of is a lot of Indian food because a lot of Indian food is super filling, super tasty, but a lot of it is sans meat. So it's either, you know, a lot of Ethiopian too. I mean, similar vein, but yeah, but I, I haven't, I haven't really gone in that direction, but like chickpeas, baby, a lot of dal, a lot of chickpeas, a lot of rice, a lot of great sauces, it's a lot of spice, right? And, you know, you bloom the spice and the ghee and all that stuff. But, like, uh, the this, the dinners are filling and you're not, la- like, you're not like, oh, well, this isn't, it's not fulfilling. And it really is. So, I would recommend. I could eat, I could eat, like, a crock of curry chickpeas and be just as happy about yeah. it. Yeah. No, totally. You know, with with some of those vegetarian options other little lighter things on the side yeah i mean you know we will we'll just do like you know rice and then the the vegetarian dish on top and then a side of uh bread you know non whatever right so uh that's that's my recommendation for like if you really want to sort of go that direction i would recommend more vegetarian meals but like vegetarian and not too much fake meat stuff so whatever also you know whatever stop drinking 15 gallons of beer a day yeah that that, yeah that helps (laughs) (laughs) all right um i i've been cooking up a storm lately um uh i've in the past week i've made duck fried rice because I ordered from uh, the Szechuan place that you and I love up by uh, oh yeah the uh, Hopkins, and I had I got Oriental Express. I just yeah. had it last night. Yeah, I got I got duck and today for lunch. <laughs> I got duck and it was really good. And I I just I bu- I, I got a bunch of sides and shit. So I had a lot of duck left over. So I just took the duck and made duck fried rice. It was amazing. Uh, I made bean soup like I talked about earlier. I made chicken noodle soup, which was great. And I finally figured out the way to make chicken noodle soup in a way that I like that doesn't drive me insane. And it's to keep the soup and the noodles separate. Okay. So like I'll make the soup with the chicken, you know, and the onions, celery, carrots, and whatever else I'm putting in there, tomatoes, whatever. Uh, I'll have that. And then in a separate thing i'll do like uh i did egg noodles last time and then i'll just cook the egg noodles and have them separate and then at per bowl add the noodles okay mix it up sure and then serve it that way tomorrow the noodles aren't complete mush right. and there's no more broth sure i'm like why didn't i start doing this like fucking years ago uh because i was dumb and i didn't really think about it so <laughs> For those out there who get crazy about that kind of shit and you just add water and then water down your soup, keep them separate. Like, you know, keep them separated just like uh, that, that old band, uh, what's their name? Uh, Nirvana said. Yeah, Nirvana said. 
<laughs> I don't want to say the f- I fucking hate the Oak Spring. Um, why? I fucking hate that band. They're terrible. Um. Oh, I ordered Lido pizza last week and it was great. Okay. Yeah, they have a thing where so I didn't want to cook last Friday. I've been trying to cook more on Fridays to keep down take out, you know, again, dietary reasons. Uh and I was just like I'm exhausted. Can we just get a fucking pizza? <laughs> Leanna was like, "Yeah, but I kind of want something different." And I was like, "Well, there's a Lido right by work." And she was like, "Oh, great." Cuz we all like that cuz that's you know, fucking real thin cracker crust. Sure, yeah. Uh, you've had Lido pizza, yeah? Oh, a million times. Okay. You can order their pizza half-baked. What? Yeah, you can order a whole Lido pizza half-baked and then take it home and bake it yourself all the way through. Interesting. Yeah, it's a really smart fucking thing. Or on the opposite way, which is what I get it when I'm at work for lunch, when I'm just like usually really hungover. Get it well um, done. Like, yeah, you can get it well done, which is fucking great yeah, and i love a well done pizza they really do it up well and with that cracker crust it's so fucking good yeah and i i do the the lido supreme pizza which is you know well i do it like a red baron supreme pizza okay so it's pepperoni sausage mushroom <laughs> onion green pepper yeah that and yep. then you know it's fucking awesome have you had their uh their like Old Bay hot sauce buffalo chicken pizza. No, it's not bad. No, because I'm not a hillbilly. Well, instead of the you know pizza sauce, it's it's Old Bay hot sauce pizza. Sauce. Oh, really? Shit, <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> My brother-in-law used to be their executive chef until uh, like six months ago. I've I've heard the story. We've, well, we've talked about that. We've talked about that story, but I knew that fact. Right. He doesn't work there anymore. Mm. But uh, he Too he much was meth? like went huh? Too much meth. No, no, what? No, love my brother-in-law. He's awesome. <laughs> he's a head chef at a country club right now. He's fucking living oh, his best life. Nice. He loves it. That's where he got started. He loved. He loves being a chef. He couldn't really be a chef at Lido. No. Yeah, no. You know, he was just testing stuff, and he he wants to be in the show. How about we cook, make this cook. really mediocre calzone? Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It was kind of driving him nuts. Um, but he was like, when the Old Bay hot sauce thing kicked in. And they had gallons of it. He was like, dude, I could have sold that shit for fucking like $300 a gallon. Yeah. And people would have been yeah. like, hell yeah. He's like, luckily, I'm I don't know if you it. know this. You can just take hot sauce and add Old Bay to it. No, you can't. Sure you can. Not in the right proportions. No, you can't. I bet I could. You can't. You bet you can't. I bet I could food lab it. <laughs> That's That was always the joke with me. I was like, why can't you just buy the two things and combine them? <laughs> like, what? what's the special ingredient? They already told you. It's Obey. It's hot sauce and Obey. <laughs> There's Old Bay no. and hot sauce. No, yep. Nobody's fucking sneaking. Well, plus McCormick owns pasture. like all the hot sauces, so it's probably just Cholula. Right. It's Frank's or Cholula. I think it's a little too thin to be Frank's. I think. It's, oh, so then it's Cholula. I yeah. think it's Cholula. Chul- yeah. Cholula. 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 Have you ever tasted? I know this is. Com- I mean, we're going long on the intro here uh have, have you ever tasted uh their um like different kind of cholulas uh, uh i think i've had like the one with lime in it but otherwise Fra- no not really or, or the chipotle uh, one the one, one of my friends darker. is there is a food scientist there mm-hmm. and he uh gave me like all of the chul and a lot of them a lot of them are pretty good they got like a, you know, a roasted garlic one that's interesting that I actually really liked. And they got a green one. Some of them you're kind of like, oh, that tastes kind of chemically. Swing and a miss. But yeah, but you know, overall, it's like, oh, it's pretty good. So. All right. So now that we got like 30 minutes left. <laughs> oh, we can go 10 minutes long. That's fine. Um, okay. I got a lot of uh, food news. <laughs> Food news! Food news! It's eating time! Excellent! Oh, I like that. Um, <laughs> it's another reference John totally didn't get. It's Wayne's World. I Thank get you. it. Okay, you get it. Okay, great. No, 
I no, I totally get if it. If you were any good at improv, you would have been like, Yeah, Wayne's World, I get that reference. Well, I was taking a drink when you finished. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there's dead air. Can you can you do the doodly 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 do? Um Okay. Uh I'm gonna start with a I got I got I have a couple stories about nugs for you. <clears throat> oh. The first one isn't good. Tyson recalls almost 30,000 pounds of dino nuggets. There's metal uh, in those nuggets. Yeah, Tyson Brand has announced that the voluntary recall of almost 30,000 nuggets, uh, 30,000 pounds, sorry, 30,000 pounds of its frozen dinosaur-shaped nuggets due to the potential presence of small metal pieces in the product. Comes with a jagged metal O in every box. Yeah, exactly. I get that reference. That's the Simpsons. Thank you. Um. That's Crustios. That's right. Uh, according to a release from the Arkansas-based company. Oh, well, Tyson's in Arkansas. Quote, a limited number of consumers, quote, <laughs> discovered, quote, small pile of pieces of metal, unquote, in the chicken nuggets. Uh, the potential, the potentially affected product was sold in 29-ounce plastic bags and is labeled, quote, Tyson fully cooked fun nuggets, breaded shaped chicken patties unquote with cartoon drawings of red and green dinosaurs on the front of the package (laughs) the recalled product has a best if used by date of september 4th 2024 and the packaging will have one of the four lot codes Mm. first the first one is 2483 brv 207 those O's are both zeros, by the way. This is second why we had is, lock codes, John. Yeah. The second one is 2483BRV0208. Third, 2483BRV02089. <laughs> and fourth and finally, 2483BRV0210. The back of the packaging is also marked P-7211. <laughs> um, I just wanted to be serious there because it's, it's serious shit. I, I wonder what people. the form of the, the jagged metal O is. Is it just like a little square it piece like of it's, metal? It sounds like it's just shavings. Oh. Probably. Oh. Which, which are terrible because they're probably sharp as shit could fuck you up. Like going through your system some kids eating a dino nugget and his mouth starts bleeding he's like mommy, oh yeah mommy Fucking, yeah that's terrible the dinosaur is biting me uh the potentially affected tyson fun nuggets were produced at a single tyson factory on september 5th 2023 shut it down according to a re- what's that oh yeah but they're uh, people are getting beat um according to a recall notice from the u.s department of agriculture food safety and inspection service if I, I mean, F S I S, sis. Um, the product and the products include in the recall were sent to distributors in Alabama, California, Illinois, Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio, Tennessee, Virginia, and Wisconsin. Um, so yeah, they add the physis release added that one minor oral injury has been reported, like you were saying, fucking mouthful of blood. Uh, after consuming the fun nuggets, but no additional injuries or illnesses have been connected to this recall. Because they probably paid to take it away. Um, so yeah, customers with questions about receiving a refund or about the recall are encouraged to contact Tyson by calling or texting the company at one eight five five three eight two three one zero one. We we have Customer to figure out a clever a clever spelling for that. What what that yeah. spells? It probably is one eight five five. Uh, metal hurt, O's <laughs> hurt mouth. Um, yeah, eight 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 a.m. till five p.m. They're there Monday through Friday. <laughs> um, I have uh twenty two pages of notes. I have a lot of stories to get through, so let's kind of edit on the fly here. Um, do we really want to know what the Wisconsin state uh, official cocktail is? Very quickly, sure. Okay. Um, it's a uh, brandy. <laughs> Why? Uh, let's see. Um, so just give me the, uh, the the cliff notes. Okay, I'm trying to go through it. Um, the weirdly, um, so 
The state cocktail. That's right. Wisconsin bartenders tend to swap out bourbon for brandy for old fashioned. So it's an old brandy, old fashioned. So brandy's not a cocktail. It's just a liquor. liquor. But it'll be a brandy, old fashioned will be the okay. uh, thing. So they would elevate the mixed drink to have an official honor status, whereas the old fashioned became uh, an unmistakable symbol of Wisconsin, its residents and its unique culture. The resolution reads the weird part about it. This will be the first state in all 50 states to have uh, an official cocktail. What? Yeah. Weird, right? That's what? why I put it in. I was reading the article. I was like, wait, what? That's what? weird. I thought Maryland. Oh, no. Our official flower is the Black Eyed Susan. But I think the Derby. I mean, like our Freakness drink is the Black. What is our? What is? What would you say Maryland's official cocktail is? Natty Boo. Natty Boo. Um, I don't know. Uh I would guess a black eyed Susan. Sure. Why not? But it's weird because like. They, they quoted some guy and said, if you're going to order an old fashioned, you could get it made either with questionable whiskey or good brandy. Um, what? What? We're, or we're not good. We're whiskey. not stupid. <laughs> we're not stupid. We chose brandy. And that's how we started drinking brandy. And then our kids started drinking brandy. And then our grandkids. And suddenly everybody's drinking brandy. Sounds like a fucking state of alcoholics. Way to go, lady. Jeanette Hurt. I don't know. I don't. Cocktail historian. I literally historian. don't know anyone that drinks brandy. That's why you don't live in motherfucking. Uh, what state are we talking about here? Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> Goes with them cheese curds, baby. Fucking weirdos. I mean, it sounds it's not, I I love a good brandy, like a good brandy. Like you could buy a really good bottle of brandy for like 30 bucks and it's fucking awesome because nobody buys brandy because they don't know what it is. I'll take a little snifter of it warmed up, you know, for for dessert. But like in mixed drinks, it's banging, you know, mm. like I put that shit in my eggnog. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> um, all right. Um. Do you want another nug story or should I wait to the end for the next nug story? Uh, mm. Or do you want to go for uh, a Georgia restaurant that's uh, charging people a fee for their shitty children? Okay, yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> a Georgia restaurant. According to a website, the Tocoa Riverside Restaurant in northern Georgia is, quote, the home of mountain song Seton as a wait a minute, that that's not Georgia. That was a weird combination accent yeah, right there. Like a weird, yeah. Um, uh, the home of mountain time seating, uh, which is super weird. Is Georgian mountain time? They're not mountain time, right? No. Yeah, they're just in Eastern Standard, right? They are the East Coast. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. Um, but they're also known as the home of the surcharge for parents. This all started when a Redditor using the name, oh God, some asshole name, LP Pineapple Pizza Lover. It's L Pineapple Pizza Lover, but LP, it, the way it's spelled is LP's big, Pineapple Pizza, whatever. Uh, Locust took Point, a photo Pineapple. of, what's that? Locust Point, Pineapple. Yeah, exactly. Um, they took a photo of the restaurant's menu uh, saying, this restaurant charges you for X. It charges you extra for bad parenting. The picture showed a number of additional charges that Tocoa, T-O-C-C-O-A, Tocoa, yeah, Tocoa restaurant diners, Riverside diners should face, including a 20% gratuity for parties over six. Uh, any table that requires separate checks. Jesus. Oh. That's, a, that's a pain in the ass. Come on, that's don't do that. silly. I mean, people are going to charge you. Uh, I, it's Georgia. Maybe they're not good tippers. I don't know. Uh, or <laughs> diners who order from the restaurant's birthday menu. What? Uh, Why well, have the birthday menu then? Yeah. They're like, oh, well, show me it's your birthday. Um, it also noted that customers who didn't pay with cash would have a 3.5% added to the bill. Okay. No. I'm starting to hate this place. Fuck this place. And then there was a charge for, quote, adults unable to parent, unquote. The menu warned that adults, adult diners would be faced with an undisclosed fee designated only as three dollar signs if their children were deemed to be poorly behaved. That seems to be illegal. That seems awful. Yeah. 
you know, it, it it would be it would be a joke if it was like, you know, charge you a dollar, right? Or something, which still is probably illegal, but uh I guarantee you this place is run by people that are over 70. Or I, gar- just, I mean, I don't know. It could it could be you know, it could be like people over 70 or it could be like the guys that run Atlas. You know, that's, like that's true. they're just trying to nickel and dime you every step of the way. Like, oh, yeah, you want to be here to eat food if you want to pay anything but cash. Huh. Huh. You're going to eat those fees, baby. So the restaurant is in the Georgia's Blue Ridge Mountains, about 10 miles from the Tennessee border. OK, yeah, these people are over 70. Yeah, and is a popular destination for outdoor lovers who can fish, raft, or paddle down the Tacoa River. The restaurant owner, Tim Richter, uh, told WBS-TV that the parenting surcharge was implemented, quote, a few years ago, unquote, during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Quote, we want parents to be parents, he said, adding that he can never even threaten to charge someone until a couple weeks ago when a group of nine kids dined at the restaurant. Okay. The charge, which some Google reviewers have reported as a flat fee of 50 bucks has been uh, reported several times in the past two weeks. Quote, the most disrespectful owner made a huge scene in front of the entire restaurant because our children were quote, uh, running the restaurant, running through the restaurant, unquote. One recent Google reads, Review reads, quote, the children were down by the river. Were they by a van? Uh, hmm. We were told we need to go to Burger King and Walmart and that we were bad parents. They have a $50 surcharge for bad children. <laughs> another another reviewer wrote that he was, quote unquote, disappointed because although he says his children watched a tablet until their meals arrived, his family was charged $50 because of my children's behavior. <laughs> this guy's this this person's going to wind up on uh, like hotel hell or kitchen nightmares uh, or whatever. Ah, you better believe it. Let me take a look at uh Sir Tim Richter here. I'm sure all of my uh Please be old. Please be old. Please be old. Yeah. Tim Richter. A- anyone that says parents should be parents basically is saying like, yeah, you need to beat your kids in public so that they yeah. shut up at the restaurant. Well, uh, let's see a video of this fucking guy. Uh oh. There's a video. I just don't see a picture of this fucking jerk off. <laughs> okay, <laughs> fine. Um. Yeah, he's a dick. Whatever. Fuck. Fuck off. Another family from Florida got charged fifty bucks. Uh. So Brian. Oh, in in a okay, Brian Kara. Oh, no, let's come on, come on, come on. Brian Car- Caracciolo. Caracciolo. Brian uh, C. Yeah, Brian C., who is a restaurant owner himself, told the outlet that a group of five families went to the restaurant during their vacation. Their group included 11 children. And before they left, they were told that they were facing a parent surcharge. <laughs> Caracciolo said that a restaurant staff member told the group, quote, he has raised his children and he is not going to raise ours. Huh? See, that doesn't don't, don't sense. put it like you're not going, don't surcharge that large of a table for like kids. Just say, oh, there's 11 clean, kids. It's a cleanup fee. You know, it's going to take extra hands to clean up after but this even then, many fuck kids. Fuck off. Don't, you're, you know, like, that's terrible. Uh, hold on. Richter told Atlanta News uh, first that neither Kara Chachilo, I don't know how to say this guy's name. It's driving me crazy. Caraxiolo? Let's not it's concentrate too, on the guy's last name. It's too many C's. Too many C's. Uh, nor any of the other customers actually had to pay the $50 fee. Either way, it sounds like it's up to the parent. So it sounds like they're just being fucking boomers and being like, you know, you got to pay this $50 fee. You might want to keep your fucking children in line like we did back in my day, back in the 50s, when you got beat a kid in public. You know, like, it's just a warning, basically, like, hey, I think your kids aren't behaving the way that I think they should. 
I'm going to fake charge you 50 bucks. Oh, I'm actually not going to charge you, but I just wanted to fucking scare you. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> I wonder what his him. opinion is on like, you know, free school lunches for kids. Oh, I bet he doesn't want to give it to him. <laughs> uh, Heinz uh, has a pickle flavor ketchup. People oh. aren't super happy about it. I'm not going to read this because it's just a bunch of fucking people getting pissed off yeah. and screaming at Heinz to it's bring news back to me, but uh, I'd try it. Yeah, why not? It sounds it, isn't that just relish? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, DiGiorno has a Thanksgiving pizza. Mm-hmm. Uh, so sure, that What's sounds fun. Um, hmm. I turkey. just went past that. Yeah, I'm sure there's turkey. There's Sweet turkey. potatoes saw, or mashed potatoes. I saw a picture of it. Um, it this just announced DiGiorno Thanksgiving pizza it takes a thick Detroit style crust and piles it high with turkey, rich gravy, diced sweet potatoes, green beans, cranberries, two kinds of cheese, and a crispy mm. onion topping. Doesn't sound bad. Eh. The pizza looks like shit, but I, it doesn't look. Bad. I, w- I would I would call that a Thanksgiving casserole. But it's definitely not a pizza. Well, I mean, it looks like a pizza. It doesn't look like a casserole. Detroit style pizza is not like Chicago. So, um, let's just blow past that. Now, now the nugget thing. This is this will interest you. <laughs> okay. Wendy's chicken nuggets are free on Wednesdays what? through the rest of the year. Why? We're gonna get into it on November eighth, yesterday, as of the recording of this program. Uh, Wendy's announced that it's spreading holiday cheer in the form of free nuggets. Oh boy! It's a, in a deal, it's named Wendy's Wednesdays. The chain is offering a free six-piece chicken nugget offer with any mobile app purchase. Okay. Every Wednesday through the end of 2023. I was going to say if they're just offering free nuggets, like it's going to be a riot. <laughs> I mean, you can buy a soda and free nuggets, I guess. As long as it's via the mobile app. Yeah. Well, let's see. I'm not reading their press release because fuck that. <laughs> so, um, so you still potentially can't. So there's what? Six pieces in the set. And, you know, you still got, what's that? Um, seven weeks left to go. So there you go. Okay. Yes, it's 42 nuggets. Ready you know what I want is a nugget advent calendar. Gross. They'd be all rotten by the end. Oh, you're rotten by the end. I'm rotten now. It's fine. <laughs> I, start, I started out rotten. Oh, uh, we got egg rolls last night and we used some McDonald's hot mustard to dip them in. Oh, nice. It was so good. You know, you know where I went yesterday uh, for lunch through my work? Have you ever been to the Rathskeller? Have you ever heard of the Rathskeller? In Ellicott City? Uh, no, it's in, uh, oh, in El- Elkridge, in, I guess. Yes. Yeah. It's like the German place. Yeah. It's got the downstairs bar. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Ate at the downstairs bar, got their schnitzel. It's good stuff. It was really, have you eaten there? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was like eating one giant chicken nugget. It was great. Everything yeah. was super crispy. Their potatoes were awesome. Yeah. They got like, good sausages. Uh, pancakes. try the sampler. I did try the sampler. Mm. Uh, all their sausages are from Binkert's, so you can't go wrong. Aha. Um, so, yeah. Uh, to redeem the Wendy's, Wendy's Wednesday offer, simply order through the online app or scan the digital Wendy's rewards code in restaurant. So, there you go. Doesn't say anything about, like, you can Still involves me to going things. to Wendy's, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, is that a thing you normally do? Do you like Wednesdays? Wendy's? No, I, I really don't. I mean, I don't mind their sandwiches, but usually the places are so bad in terms of service. And like, there's barely like, like a chair there. I, right. I don't even, I don't know what's going on with Wendy's, but um, cause they're not killing it in the UK like Burger King. Cause I don't really like Burger King either. McDonald's at least they seem to have this like technological platform nailed down. Yeah. Whereas if I want to spend four dollars on lunch, I can go in there and get a McDouble and some nuggies and probably a drink for like four fifty. I prefer Burger King. 
I uh, sometimes I, will get like a little craving. I'll get like a double cheeseburger, but nah. But I don't. I, I don't eat any of that shit. So mm. you don't eat double cheeseburgers. I don't eat fast food. But then ever. How do you prefer Burger King if you don't eat fast food? When I used to eat that shit, that's who I liked. So that was probably when Burger King was decent. (laughs) Have they gone down since? Yeah, they're not that good. The only, the last two fast foods I've had were out of shits and giggles, like seven months ago, I got Taco Bell and I probably will never, ever get Taco Bell again. Yeah. And I, a lot of the my peers really love Taco Bell. I fucking hate Taco yeah. Bell. And uh, twice a year I'll get, or no, once a year I'll get a bucket of chicken from KFC. Okay. Just because that's hardcore childhood memory. And, would, it, 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 and it never disappoints. It tastes like KFC and it's delicious. But a bucket of chicken these days costs you 50 fucking dollars. Well, at like Royal Farms, but yeah, I mean, no, at KFC, it's fucking expensive as shit. Sometimes you can get a deal, like especially at Popeyes, and I would not sleep on the red beans and rice. No, nah, talk about Popeyes; they're pretty good. KFC, okay, pedantic minute. I'm a snob. Yeah, I don't eat the shit, and if I want to eat the shit, I want to eat the shit that I want. You, you yeah. will eat shit. I do eat shit. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this this will unlock a new fear, um, and it's a very horrible story because now I am terrified of cakes. Um, <laughs> so a Paris baguette cake box warns against the tradition of smashing cakes in people's face because on November 4th, Redditor blah, 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 posted an image of warning on the back of a cake box from Paris Baguette, a South Korean bakery chain with nearly 100 locations across the U.S. I've never heard of this place. Um, And it says on the back, quote, this cake has a warning to not face smash, unquote. Um, So. It's a real thing. Um. And is it because of like listeria quote? There's a clip in the middle of the cake board to keep the cake stable during transportation uh. <laughs> behaviors, such as traditional fake face smashing into the cake can result in severe injury. <laughs> and like, so they, they, they were saying it's been on the box for a while. So we included the clip to make sure they don't move, you know, don't shift in transit. And then, uh, but that it's weird. They, you know what they need is a slow motion like mannequin that's full of like injury goo that somebody <laughs> does the the, like, fate, the cake like, smash like forged in fire. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this cake will kill. <laughs> You're like holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> ah, ah. Fuck, face comes up. It's got fucking dye coming out of it. Goo. The eyeball falls out into the cake. And then the dog runs minute. up and eats it. Okay, so <laughs> here's here's the thing. Here's the thing that's on the box. Quote, there's a clip in the middle of the cake board to keep the cake stable during transportation. Behaviors such as traditional face smashing into the cake can result in severe injury. Some of the decorations on the cake might not might be inedible. Unquote. What? So, I mean, you know, if it's like a gun or something, sure, we get it. Yeah, but who puts a Beretta on a cake? I mean, if it if you're giving it to Beretta. Oh, um, yes. The guy from the 70s. Wow, it's a real Beretta. Yeah. Uh, no, the guy from the 70s. <laughs> you're old as hell. Well, that, isn't that the show, the Beretta? Um, it is a show, yes. Uh, the thing that worried me that I was like, oh, my God, this has had to have happened, right? Right. Is that so there are so many cakes that. You know, they're pretty tall, so they put dowels in the cakes, mm-hmm. like wooden dowels. Sure. And if people don't know that there's, it's there when they take the cake apart, somebody smashes into it. Yeah, it's like a fucking punji stick in your face. <laughs> well, they shouldn't make them with punji sticks. Well. They didn't have to dip the. They didn't know, have the, to sharpen the, it, but the, they, they took the time, so I appreciate it. 
sharpen and dip it in, in manure, which yeah. is very highly toxic. Yeah, it kind of ruins the cake. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, fucking. I mean, and this is the thing, and you see videos of it all the time that people constantly like to fucking smash people's face. Oh, shit. Well, here's what they have to do. Oh, they God, hold on. Cool. <laughs> so here's, here's the thing. So here's some Reddit people talking about the warnings, right? So one person's like, congratulations, you've unlocked a new fear. Yeah, totally for me too. Um, and then someone wrote, and, you know, take this as a grain of salt because who gives a shit? It's probably fake. But quote, after watching a video of a cake smash with wooden stakes that were basically pointy chopsticks to hold the cake together <laughs> and seeing aftermath of a girl losing an eye. Yes, this warning is needed. Also, why would you watch that video? We are geniuses and predicted the future. Uh, yeah. Oh, in 2021, reports emerged about a woman who almost lost her eye during a cake smash. When her head was pushed into a birthday cake, she was impaled by a sharp wooden dowel, which narrowly missed her eyeball and had to be re re removed. Oh, my God. I'm like stuttering. Be removed by an emergency room doctor. Oh, God. Hey. 911. Oh, God. We got another cake smash. Everybody. How about you not be a fucking asshole to your friends or your family? I was going to make a joke about well before we got into the whole cake steak, uh, cake you know, steak aspect of it. We can sell them cake steaks <laughs> pre manured <laughs> cake steaks. Think we just figured it out. But I was saying that if there's a cake clip like in the bottom, you know, when somebody's about to do a cake smash, it's got a, a gyroscopic alarm that just starts going off. <laughs> and then it does like it does like in uh, Demolition Man, and it just shoots a bunch of safety foam out, so you can't get you know staked in the face. You're really into Arnold Schwarzenegger tip today, aren't you? That's Sylvester Stallone, you dim dingus. Demolition Man is him. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Sandra Bullock, I, Sylvester I, Stallone. Are you kidding me, Rob Schneider? Wait, a minute, isn't that Wesley Judge Dredd? Snipes? Isn't that Judge Dredd? No, that's two years later. Also, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone and Rob Schneider. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, you said Rob Schneider. I thought I, didn't, thought that I only did one. Never mind. Ago. Never mind everything I've just said. Go show Crosby Demolition. Demolition, man. man. No, I'm good. I'm a, I'm a tango and cash guy myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's terrifying. Just, hey... How about you just let the person fucking enjoy their cake without smashing their face into it and videoing it for your own fucking clout like a monster? Just fucking just let him enjoy cake. Does everything have to be like that? On TikTok. Oh, God. So terrible. I if somebody did that to me, I'd fucking beat them to death. <laughs> I like I'm not kidding. I would I would I would physically assault someone if they push my Guess face. Guess who's getting cake. cake smashed at my wedding? <laughs> I can't wait. Are you going to do that at your wedding? No, we're doing a, a ice cream truck. So you're not going to smash anything in your wife's we're face? We're not doing any, maybe, maybe an ice cream. I don't know. <laughs> but no, probably not. I promised Leanna I wouldn't do it. I did not do it. And then a friend ran up to me and smashed his cake into my face. <laughs> And then I smash cake into you his. Got to drive by caking. And then, according to all the Baltimore rules, Leanne and I were no longer married, and me and my buddy were married. So interesting. R.I.P. Ricky Wyckoff. Um, that is a that's a good plot to another <laughs> Sandra Bullock, <laughs> Sylvester Stallone movie. Stop it! Just stop. <laughs> and speaking of stopping, that's it. And thank you for listening to the Rude Cooking School podcast. <laughs> I will be back next week uh, with a. I think we're going to do a Thanksgiving um, question episode. I have talked to the people on the Rude Cooking School Facebook group, which you should add yourself to. And I've added uh, and I've asked Evan's people on the City That Breeds Discord. And I've gotten a couple uh, questions and I'll be mining your uh, followers for another week as well. Yep. And I appreciate all their help because they came up with some good. I've seen. I've seen two questions. They were really good questions. So, yeah, and two um, of them paid me money this week for uh, you know our annual annual fundraiser. Air quote. Oh, that's nice. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super cool. 
we don't often ask for funds, but uh, you know, when it comes to breaking even, I I'm not ashamed. Yeah, I mean, that's why I'm starting a Patreon in oh a month and a half. <laughs> um, it's gonna be very low, everybody. It's only gonna be two dollars. Uh, two dollars. Speaking, yeah, exactly. It's kind of why I'm doing it. Um, if you are a member of Discourse, where should they find you at Discourse? Discord. <laughs> Discord. <laughs> You Discord. can find the link to our Discord at uh, ctb.show. That is the website where you will find the uh, podcast and the link to our Discord because we don't pay for a custom URL. I would if people gave me more money, but uh, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have that kind of money. I work for the government. And you'll get a lot of good discourse over at Discord. There is a lot of local chat going on there in is. Discord Constantly. if you are a, a member of the Baltimore community. You might want to mute it, otherwise you're going to get a lot of notifications on your phone. But come back from work, check in, see what's happened during the day. We've got some like people that actually work in various you know aspects of news uh, on the Discord, and um, sometimes I talk about video games. It's great. Yeah. So uh, listen to the City That Breeds podcast. They're great. What did you guys cover last week that you just put out? Uh. Hold on one sec. I'll bring up the show notes. Oh, Jesus. You don't even know what you talked about. Um, so we watched a movie called Brain Scan, which is a 1994 or 5 classic. movie starting, starring Eddie Furlong. And it's about a video game in which it's virtual reality and you're a killer. What's his or name? Is it? What's his name? Hold on. What's the what's the monster's name? Uh, uh, Trickster. Yeah, there it is. Oh, <laughs> goddamn Trickster. Said yep. fucking movie's garbage. It's so good. It is It is a very bad movie. And if you want to hear us talk about it, uh, that's ctb.show. Uh, before I get out of here, if you are into good horror movies, I watched a horror movie that chilled my goddamn fucking heart to the bone, uh, which was uh, When Evil Lurks. It's a... Uh, uh, movie. I have, where's the guy from? Shit. It's, it's South American and it's fucking terrifying. It was so fucked up. Like nobody is safe in this fucking movie. It has rules. They stick to the rules, but it's very open. It, it, it was, a, it was a breath of fresh air. It was really fucked up and it was really good. That has been night of the movies with John yeah. Hazard. And with that, thank you for listening to the Rude Cooking School podcast. Uh, please rate and review us on iTunes, which actually still somehow makes a difference. Like, iTunes isn't even a thing. And if you rate us on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, it actually makes a gigantor difference that is unproportional to Spotify, which you should follow us, or, you know, every other place, Amazon, or fucking, you know, Wherever you find your podcast, follow us or rate and review us. Uh, we appreciate it. We don't pay for uh, uh, you know, promotions you or advertising, just like Evan. And uh, word of mouth is how we get around. And we really appreciate when people just go out of their way to help us. Um, I'll be back next week. And Evan, we'll see you in a few weeks. And thank you for listening to the Root Cooking School podcast. My I'll be right here in this meeting waiting for you. With the same shirt on. Uh, yes. <laughs> my name is John Alza the third. Oh, my name's Evan the Mayor, and don't ever use fat free mozzarella for any reason whatsoever. Words to live by, everybody. Don't yuck my yum. Uh eat everything. Peace. Bye.